Well, I don't know what to do about that. Sets of minutes from April 30th. I'll second that. Joyce is second. Uh, discussion? No. All in favor? Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Aye. Any comments on gender and payroll warrants? No. No? No. Go along. Uh, an appointment. Hi. I'm I Jessica Corwin. I'm the chair of the Sunderland School Committee at Frontier Parents, and I've been working with the Frontier students who collected signatures um, for a citizens' petition for your annual town meeting. Um, we've been doing it in, in parallel in all 40 and 38 Frontier towns. It, um, it, it is a petition to lower the municipal voting age to 16 um, in order to help kids get initiated into the process of voting and make it a habit before they leave their home communities while they are still living in a place that um, they're really invested in. Um, this petition was passed at the Sunderland town meeting. It failed in Deerfield by three votes out of almost 300 voters. Um, the, the students would like to bring it back to Deerfield in the future. Um, and I'm just here to connect with you and answer any questions you have. Okay. There were, I was going to have three uh, of the students with me, and in the last two hours, they've all had minor tragedies for all them, or death, sickness, or injury, <laughs> yeah. and the lost ride. Okay, so, yeah. I'm thank, sorry. thank you. I was going to ask you if you had someone. They were going to be here. Someone from Waitley in here, but that would explain it. Uh, do you have any uh, experience of other towns that have done this? What, what levels of participation? we can expect from 16, 17 year olds. Yes, this has been done in a number of places, um, particularly in multiple municipalities in Maryland and Colorado, where it was made easier to make this change. Um, and they've seen over and over that um, participation increases for all age groups when you do this, because the 16 and 17 year olds, they're excited, it's the first time, their, their friends are doing it, so they're all excited together, and then they bring their parents. And then I got the sense from some of our other neighbors that, um, a generation higher than that is concerned about how the teenagers are voting, so then they show up in larger numbers to try to <laughs> teenagers will vote the same way, but <laughs> there's a fear that that could happen. Okay. Um, okay. Julia. Yeah. Uh, do we need to make a decision on this tonight? No, no, this is, is this, this, this is this town meeting one. Oh, this, okay. this is just informational. Yeah. I, I can tell you some more. Yeah, I'd be interested yeah. to, I don't know, can you lead us to things online where we can read about other communities that have done this? Uh, yes, I think the best website for that is youthrights.org. Okay. And there's also vote16usa.org, but the 16 is the number 16. Vote16usa.org. And this is just municipal decision. Correct. So they would not be able to vote in state or federal elections, mm -hmm. and they would not be allowed to run for office. Because until you're 18, you can't sign a legally binding contract. This is just about voting in town. So I know the 16 year old select board members. Not yet. <laughs> you, have to, you have to get some special legislation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
uh, would, I'm not going would this be applicable for school committee? They would be able to vote for their own school committee members. Um, I have seen other activists making that argument that the kids know better than anyone what's actually happening in the schools and they're really well positioned to decide what values should be on their school committee. Joyce, any questions? I don't have any questions. I think it's a great idea. Anything else? No, no, nothing else. Well, thanks for coming, okay. letting us know, and letting our audience. But I'm know. easy to find online as the Sunderland School Committee member. So if anybody has follow up questions, please email me. And I, I would, the only suggestion I would make to you is that town meeting when you come to the fence that you have some Waitley residents with you. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah. One of the students is a Waitley resident, and okay. the kids will, will lead the introduction. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, Chief is scheduled for 6 30. Not there yet, so we'll be on to new business. Uh, we need to review town meeting articles by tradition. What do we need to do? Basically, uh, there are two other petitions. Um, besides this, the 15 year old to vote, I gotta find it in my paper there. Okay, there. Um, one is um, to do the zip and have the zip code to see if the town will vote to petition the United States Postal Service to change the current four zip codes. Waitley residents utilized in the town of Waitley, and she lists off the number, the zip codes to 101093 for all residents receiving mail in Waitley. So that's one um, petitioned article. So it goes on on the Warren. And the other is a resolution to end the Warren Gaza. So both of those have received the Appropriate number of signatures to be put on the warrant. Am okay. I missing portions of petitions? They should look something like this. There's one in the last page right there. I, I've got one for changing the zip. Okay. Oh, and then the other one looks like for the end of the war in God. Yeah. It's got your signature? No, it, that, she just didn't oh. copy the back. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's what I meant. I'm missing something. No, they've, they've <laughs> all been certified. They've been certified. Oh, by so the yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they have been certified by the town clerk all the signatures. So. Oh, yeah, that's sorry. Good. And I should know this, but how many signatures do we need to actually? For an annual town meeting, you need 10. Uh -huh. um, for a special so town meeting, you need. 200, 200 or 10% of the registered voters, which is ever less. Oh, that's the one way it would be Thank 160. You. Yeah. Cool. Well, no, 160 yeah. residents, but there were fewer than that. Oh, that's right. Voters. That's voter, uh, 100 on the left, 110, uh, 10, something like that. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, next, press the town clerk for tabulated article and annual town meeting. Uh, Amy had submitted a memo to you folks. If I remember correctly, we, Amy, Valley came before us to ask for this money at ARPA and we declined at that time. And sitting in finance committee meetings, I recollect that she came and asked for for it as a capital project, and I'm looking at our list of capital projects. I don't see it there either. It, yeah, it was on, is it a number three or priority? It was a prior, priority B and not recommended funding under the capital plan mm -hmm. this, when it reviewed it this year, and Finance Committee had a strong preference for filling out their balance manually. Okay, well, whatever the reason, it seems that it's been submitted through the appropriate channels at this point uh, for funding and was not 
consider. Um, I don't I think she wanted to do a last ditch attempt with you folks to see if well, you consider putting it on. Um, as I said, it, it's been considered twice and has not moved forward. And I just mm -hmm. don't, don't see why we should bypass our usual procedure. But uh, you know, my personal feeling is I have a feeling that within the next two to five years, this will be a mandate. The, 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 the state may, the state may, I'm not will be, but, <laughs> but the state with so few communities left, not having like constitutes, could well pass a mandate at the time when it's a mandate. Certainly. That That is why I took it off the capital plan in 2000. I had it on the capital plan, 2001. Mm -hmm. I had it on the capital plan because I thought it was going to be mandated at some yeah. point. Hmm. It is now 2024, and it still hasn't been mandated. Um, so I'm not sure that that is going to be the case. I think uh, we have heard from the director of elections many times that it that's a community thing, oh, and okay. it most likely okay. won't be mandated. But you never know. Things do change. Uh -huh. um, so I think Amy's position was that it, in order to get the feeling of the residents, it needed to be brought before them at, in some fashion. Mm -hmm. And that's why she submitted this letter, is to, to get it before the residents. I have to say, um, given my experience as town clerk, my guess is, depending on the people there, probably you don't, they like the little box. You, you, you <laughs> Let's don't, put you it don't that have way. To speculate. They, they like the little box. So, that, but I think that was her uh, in order to get it to the townspeople to see. Um, and she, because the closing of the warrant had already ended, she didn't have time to do it as a petition article. So, probably. Better luck next year. Better next year. I think part of the system is that the finance committee is supposed to be the representative of town meeting. Yeah. And if the finance committee has passed on it, I don't see a reason to to go around that and approve this up. Joyce, any comment on this? Hmm. Yeah, this is a, to me that it's, it's a hard one because yeah, you kind of want to put it before people to decide. Um, but I guess I um, I missed the last finance committee meeting. So um, I, it may have been at least brought up. Is it? Do they really never ever? It was brought up to the finance committee. Even consider talking about it. Capital project, and they decided not. They are not. Funded. Okay. They, yeah. Oh, okay. So it's lowest priority or something like that. Right. It was a priority yeah. fee, and yeah. they discussed it not at length, but it's sure. in detail. But as I said earlier, they did. In, express their joy at using pen and paper and praying. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. I. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess. I, I would say our consensus is not to take any action. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need to move and vote? You no, know, we're just not taking any action. The last paragraph of this. A uh, letter is possibly something different, requesting that the codification of bylaws not be brought to the annual town meeting. Um, yeah, I think uh, you have a pretty lengthy uh, annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I did talk a little bit, Amy, about the codification and that basically I think it's something that's just housekeeping. It's mm -hmm. clean up the, the code so that it, um, it, it, Everything is like all the references to selectmen are removed and put in select board and things like that. So it's basically a housekeeping document. So I think she feels okay presenting that at special town meeting. I think originally she felt it really should be brought before um, annual because it was changes to the code. Um, but after talking about it a little bit more, it was more of a housekeeping thing. And plus, the uh, planning board has presented some zoning articles at mm -hmm. an annual town meeting. 
And some of those articles will affect the code where, um, so, so rather it, than it, doing it, it, it twice. This would have to be done a second right, time. It would have to be done a second time. So we, I suggested to her that we wait until after the code, the uh, attorney general approves the present, the articles that are being brought up before annual town meeting, mm -hmm. and then the code can be adjusted and voted once. Assuming that, that the sense. planning okay. board code changes are approved, right. they still have to be sent to the attorney general's office for approval there. Right. So th right. this would just mean we would have to do the codification twice. So the ones that are so referenced. Just do it once no, at the okay. meeting in the fall yeah. after Thank everything else. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, oh, uh, opioid litigation amendment. So we have this communication in your packet, mm -hmm. which um, is a protected communication. So hopefully that you've read it. Mm -hmm. And basically it's asking um, parties that are still part of the original opioid class action suit, if they want to amend their complaint to include the party mentioned in this letter. Mm -hmm. And if you are inclined to do so, we need to notify them by May 17th. Is there any specific party that they will need to? Are they two parties? Yes, there are two parties noted in the second paragraph, uh, last paragraph. Paragraph. third paragraph, last sentence at the bottom of the first page. Yeah. Yeah. What does it mean if we vote to add those and what does it mean if we don't? So if you vote to add, then the original claim that we joined years ago, um, we would be party to any future settlements that were negotiated. If you choose not to, then you're still part of the original claim that we're getting payments from, but you would not receive any that comes as a result of any court settlement, favorable or unfavorable to these parties. And is there any payment out by the town in order to? No, and no, it's part of the original class the action. Original. Yeah. It doesn't seem like there's any downside to add. No. Yeah, that would be my recommendation yeah. to move forward. Okay. I move that we. Let, uh, let Joyce and Let Joyce make sure. <laughs> I want to make sure Joyce isn't forgotten there. Hello, Joyce. Oh, oh thanks. Um, I. It sounds like I was going to even use the same phrase, Fred. That there isn't any downside to including them. So let's uh, let's do that. Do we need a motion and a vote then? Yes, we do. Okay, I'm pulling that back up on the screen so I can say it right. Um, I um, move that we uh, vote to include. Uh, am I allowed to say who the defendants are? Uh, uh, Joyce, I would just say to amend our original class action suit as part of the national opioid litigation. Okay. Uh, I move that we uh, vote to amend our um uh, Okay, I know this looks bad because you just said this and I can't repeat it right <laughs> after you said it. Class action. <laughs> Amend our participation in the class action suit uh, as described to include these other defendants. Second. Further discussion? Vote? Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Aye. Jim is here now. I don't know if he wanted. He's online. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, or do you want to keep going? Well, he's actually he's scheduled for six thirty. So we'll have to finish up a couple of these things. Okay. Uh, interdepartmental transfers. Okay. Um, I think I've been kind of keeping you informed of these things that might be coming up as far as the departments for transfers. One of them is the assessors. Uh, they're going to be probably about $1,500 short with their new um, contract for the last two months of the year. 
Um, and right now we haven't spent any money out of the unemployment account. So that might be a good account to do the interdepartmental transfer from. Um, so just, it, just, it just frames what, can you explain the relevance of interdepartmental transfer is now? Uh, um, well, technically the assessors we probably don't have to do quite yet. Um, but because we're pretty much aware of how short they're going to be, we might as well, we could take care of it now. The finance committee also has to vote it. So basically at the interdepartmental transfers can be done the last two months of the fiscal year and into 15 days into the next fiscal year. So July 15, um, basically it's to cover these smaller, uh, expenses that were either anticipated or just, you know, prices change mid year or whatever, um, by transferring from another account that may have money left in it and, and handle that deficit that, that would exist. So the assessors, it would be like 1500. Um, another one would be the treasurer collector. However, that one, I'm not recommending doing a transfer yet because it's going, her budget will be very close on whether she can absorb the that increase in her budget. Um, right now it's too close to call, so we okay. could wait until closer to the- um, and, and you indicate that there's the title tax account, yeah. which would be the, the, the source- The title that. account has $7,000 left in it. And then the last one I, I am recommending that you take care of for today because um, it's an interdepartmental transfer for Harper's payroll. I think we have enough to make it through the next payroll, but after that, we won't. So, <laughs> so and I, uh, it would be about four hundred dollars. And again, we can take that from the tax taking account. So, um, and if finance is meeting on Tuesday, perhaps, 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 then they could take care of that one as well at that point in time. So, um, but those are. The only ones that we're recognizing at this point are the for interdepartmental transfers. Uh, well, not technically an interdepartmental transfer. We were talking about a transfer to the assessors. The, uh, there's an assessor's account that they had to vote on. I can just what the overlay thing. What what is the status? Was okay. that, that is that done? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just. Double checking. I don't didn't remember if we talked about that we, here, but yeah, um, it was a couple meetings ago. It was a few oh, meetings ago. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So okay. they had submitted their letter, and and uh, so that money really account yeah. has been well. It will be will, at the end of the will fiscal be transferred year. At, the time. <laughs> yeah. at the end of the fiscal year, it will get transferred kind of in a roundabout way to bulk free cash, okay. basically. Fine. <laughs> so. yeah. I have a I guess, couple of questions about the unemployment account and the yeah. tax title account. Neither of those accounts has a specific legal requirement around keeping certain amounts of money or certain funds in it. Unemployment, um, we appropriate ten thousand dollars every year. Mm -hmm. um, this year, we haven't had a single claim. Okay. Uh, we are self kind of self insured more or less under unemployment. We don't put into the unemployment pool. Um, That's so, what I was asking. Yeah, so yeah. when people file a claim, we have to pay directly. Okay. Um, and this year, there hasn't been any claims filed. Okay, so. And, it, it, and the it, tax taking, it, that's the balance that's in the account right now. Right. Um, so I think, um, I, uh, I talked to Amy and she didn't feel that there were going to be uh, that there's going to be some additional expense in that account, but it's not going to be an awful lot. Mm -hmm. So, because um, she's kind of at a standstill on some of the tax taking accounts because you have to wait for land for it to do their thing. So she's kind of on hold um, and probably won't get taken care of in this fiscal year. So, and e even if there's a last minute claim on one of these accounts, then you've got 15 days for the next fiscal year to. Right, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, can we move and vote on these yes. at ABC separately or all um, We can, I think we can vote all together unless anyone has an objection to, to any one of them. 
I, I just at this point in time, you're just doing the uh, assessors yeah. and the right. A&C. Right. 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 It's A&C, yeah. we're not doing the treasurer collector. Okay, I will move that we approve the department okay. transfer for the assessor's office and for Harper's payroll as suggested fifteen fifteen hundred dollars for the assessor's office and four hundred dollars for the Harper's payroll bill. I second that. Any further discussion? Vote, Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. Aye. Okay. And I assume we sign one of these later. Um, those are the original yeah. so. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. It's close enough to six thirty. Jim, if you're there, can I am, you? I am here. Uh, okay. What do you? Where's the puppy? He's he's home. Okay. He's home resting right now. Um, apologies for not being there in person. Just my whole household is battling the flu, so I didn't want to infect anybody. So figured I'd stay away. Sorry to hear that. <clears throat> okay, so what are you what is your submission? So we I think we talked about this once before. I brought it up with the finance committee as well. <clears throat> So we currently have an account, and that account is for legislative compliance. The legislative compliance was for um, training our officers to get up to the standard for post, which was the, the state standard everybody had to, to get to. So for the last three years, the town's put $15,000 into an account each year that we use for training, <clears throat> for that bridge training. Um, Things have changed over the last three years a little bit. Um, thanks to you know our representatives and senators, we were able to get some of that money refunded back that we used for training. So getting that money back um, helped us to not have to spend all of the, the money that was in that legislative compliance account. Um, this year is the, the final year we've, we've spent, I think we've, I'm just trying to think if I've got any additional expenses. I think we're pretty much done with with spending that money. And right now I think there's fourteen fourteen thousand six hundred and seventy four dollars in that account. So I'm looking at it as an opportunity with I'm not sure of the accounting process or how we need to go about doing it, but presenting it to you all um, as an opportunity to take the remaining funds or some of the remaining funds to purchase um, new duty firearms for the department. The current firearms that we have, we have rifles and handguns. The rifles are over 20 years old. The handguns are approaching 15 years old. Um, we're going to be faced with having to, to spend some money on, on those guns, replacing springs and pins and parts that may, that may go just as normal wear and tear type of stuff. Um, but I think it's a good opportunity to not have to take additional town funds to be able to purchase um, some new new firearms for the department. Um, I'm looking at the price for the handguns are about $600 per gun. Um, we're looking at a trade-in value for those right now. That trade-in value is about $175. So not a not a huge number for a trade in value, but that number is just going to go down if if we uh, if we wait longer. And the same thing with the rifles. Um, there's there's so many different patrol rifles out there. Depending on what we end up going with, um, the price could could vary on those. Uh, I'm not looking to get the most expensive, best, top quality um, firearms. We're just looking to get firearms that are basically uh, conducive to what what we use them for. So um, we use Smith & Wesson currently as our manufacturer for handguns. And again, Smith & Wesson is now making rifles as well. So it could be an opportunity to, to get rifles and handguns 
at the same time from from the same manufacturer, but um, that's kind of to be determined. I guess the first the first step is to figure out um, if I'd be able to do that. Um, in addition to the the firearms, it would require uh, holsters, ammunition, um, different different equipment, magazine holders, different things that we would have to get in order to to upgrade to a uh, to a different handgun. Um, there won't be any cost for training because we're going to use the annual training that we have. We're going to use the annual training to to roll out the new firearms. Similar platform, so they wouldn't require too too much too too much training. So I did submit two different things. I submitted a letter, and then because um, I wasn't sure how how it happened, how it would happen, and then I also submitted the interdepartmental transfer form because that account already exists. So I didn't know, again, how, how we should go about considering doing that, if we can rename that account. We don't have it. Okay. Don't have you don't have the-, the Apparently that. we don't have that, just the memo chief. Oh, okay. Yeah, they just don't have it in front of them. So I guess that would be <clears throat> um, an, an accounting thing, how we would do it. Do we need to transfer that money? We don't really have another account to put it in, so we'd have to, I'm assuming we'd have to create an account. We already have an account for that legislative compliance. Can we rename that something else? A replacement of Department of Duty Firearms or yeah, no account. Um, do you have an equipment account in yeah. your budget? Uh, we we have there's an ammunition account. Um, there's a training account which we get the equipment out of. But for the most part, the equipment comes out of um, clothing allowance or equipment allowance for each officer. So if they need a new holster, they can they can buy a new holster. If they need a new piece of equipment, they have they have funds that they can purchase. Do you vaguely qualify for ammunition? Uh, I would probably use one of your existing budget lines in your budget in order to do the transfer. Okay. Um, because the legislative compliance, if you look at it from an auditing standpoint, they're going to want to make sure that it's just legislative compliance stuff. So it might make more sense to put it in one of your um, existing budget lines. Okay. Uh, whether I, it's I do have I do have a miscellaneous account as well for the items that aren't specific. I might do the ammunition and just add to the ammunition and slash weapons or something like that, okay. just to clarify that line. Yeah. Oh, it's except the risk of the ammunition. <laughs> Something like that. Um, yeah. and that I'd use that for your for the transfer. Right. So that that would lead to my second question, I guess. Um the request that I initially submitted was ten thousand dollars. There's like I said, that fourteen thousand six hundred and seventy-four. If we spend ten thousand dollars, we transfer ten thousand dollars, there's still that four thousand six hundred and seventy-four dollars. Um the legislative compliance items are going to be done by the end of June. So there's no other additional legislative compliance um, expenditures that we would have to do. So I don't know what happens to that, that funding. If it just sits in an account and I can't spend it because there's no legislative compliance. Yep. It, it goes to free cash. Okay, but but does that does that have to be voted or does that change because no, it's that, no, it just automatically yeah. closes out. Okay. Will is will the ten thousand cover everything that you need? Uh, yes. You might yeah, you might want to keep it at ten thousand because if he starts going over the ten thousand, then he's got okay. to go out the bid and everything okay. else. So okay. um, yeah. if you yeah. want to yeah. keep it at nine hundred nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. But as far as the <laughs> as far as the purchases go, and I think I was emailing back and forth with Lynn as far as these purchases, so that they're going to be things are going to be purchased in different blocks. So I'm not going to be per, I'm not going to be doing a ten thousand dollar purchase. It's going to be this much for the handguns, this much for the rifles, this much for equipment, this much for ammunition. There's separate separate things, but I didn't <laughs> say more about me. Okay. That's that's why I wanted to bring it up. What's that? So 
it's kind of a fine line. Okay. Um, if you were over the 10,000, it would be an issue because I think they'd consider it all under right. the same type of purchase. Right. Okay. Being under 10,000, you should be okay because you just use best business practices. Yeah. Um, so I think I think you're okay under the procurement law as long as it stays under the 10,000. You want to call it 9950 or <laughs> something like that? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Um, that's kind of like it could be considered bid splitting if you took it and divvied it up against the different categories. So if, if, you were, if you were over the 10,000. Right. If you were over the 10,000. Yeah. So because that's there are different it. manufacturers, there's different. You know, we're yeah. not getting the same thing from the same company. We're getting it from yeah, but you'd have to go out the, if it was over the ten thousand, it would be a problem. So the fact that it's not over the ten thousand, then you should be fine. Yeah, because you'd have. To and and my question is simply: what, Is that sufficient to cover what you need? Yes. And without getting into the okay, without getting into the question of bidding and all of that, but we can make, a, we can make the initial purchase. I can make the initial purchase. Um, there are a number of other things that I could do uh, related to that with with that extra funding. But if it's not there and we only have the ten, we can we can at least get the the equipment that we need to to get started. Well, the the other thing you have to consider is that the interdepartmental transfers. Is this yeah. really a need? Yeah, it's got to be approved by the finance committee too. So and they're meeting next Tuesday. And he already brought it up. And yeah, I told him he needed to bring it back here first. Yeah. So okay. so yeah, you you want to make sure that everything's been taken care of before you actually make your purchases. Oh yeah. So okay. okay. And so what are we settling on the actual amount of the? Because we still have to approve the transfer for a specific amount. We want to call it ten thousand or ninety nine fifty. I'd say ninety nine fifty. <laughs> do you need Do you need the account number for? I think I think we can probably get a interdepartmental form together with the account numbers and everything. Um, okay. So that they can sign, the select board can yeah. sign off, and then we just need to get the finance committee. Okay. Yes, make a motion to and I have, can, can can I ask a, a question? Yeah. Um, I does anybody else feel a little uncomfortable about having you know the original appropriations for the uh, compliance? Um, you know, were made at articles in town meeting and brought to the finance committee, and we were doing this because we were compelled to do it, um, and it. I'm not against having our firearms um, upgraded. I think that's probably a good idea, but it seems like that's a capital item. And I just wonder how people are going to feel about that, about how, I mean, it, it seems like, hey, we set aside this money for this particular task, but if you don't need it, it should go back to free cash. I think that's sort of the, the, implicit assumption when we appropriate monies. And um, I just wonder if anybody else is feeling a little um, icky <laughs> about uh, taking that appropriation and effectively making it for capital items. I'm not saying we shouldn't purchase these. Yeah. I, I have just I wondering about the process, if that's really kosher. I I think we need to investigate on whether that legislative compliance was a special article. If it was a special article, then I think we may be in, it, it may need to go to a town meeting to do that. Um, so I, I can't quite do that. <laughs> I'm trying to look it up on my phone, but I'm not. And Jim, do you remember whether that was something that was presented as a special article or was it part of your budget? Uh, I think it was a separate article. Oh, okay. It's, it's listed as a separate line on the on the budget sheet. Okay. So I think we may end up having to handle this differently. What year was it? Um, I think it was it each was of the past the three years, years I yeah. think. Yeah. I 
Okay, we'll have to do a little bit more research, I think. Good point, Joyce. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so we can't take action, but if everything works out all right, then if you go to the Stop. finance committee, we can include it at our meeting in two weeks. Right. Okay. So, Jim, we're not going to take a vote today. We're going to look up what the legal requirements are. And if we can do it, then we'll bring it up again in two weeks. Understood. So, the, the bottom line is if it was approved at town meeting, then you can't spend any balance without a town meeting approval, another town meeting approval. They can't just transfer it because it is a special item. If it was part of your budget, then we can That's do right. a transfer. Yeah. But if it was part of the a special article, then it would have to be brought to town meeting. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was separate because it was only for three years. Yeah. It wasn't. That's what I was remembering, too. Okay. Then we will take move on from that and if we can we'll revisit it in two weeks if not it'll go to be not this year not town annual town meeting but it could be a special town meeting item okay uh next i'm going to delay the use of arco funds just because that's going to be could be a longer discussion and just get the town election warrant signed for that. What do we need? We need to do anything aside from sign. Do we have a vote? Uh, it was a special article. We don't want or just just that, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Vote to approve sign. the election warrant. Okay, we yeah. have a copy of this year's election warrant for the June 11th election. And uh, there are one, two, three, four, five. 12 different positions, including two total of four library trustees and 10 other positions on the ballot. Joyce, if you looked it over, any questions? Yeah, I, I'm good. Yeah. Um, for the general public, uh, the town election is on June, June 11th, and the hours of the polls are going to be open from 10 to 8. Okay. We need a motion. Oh. I that. That's okay. I move that we approve the town election warrant. I'll second that. Any discussion? Vote, Joyce? Aye. Julie. I claim. I. Yeah. Uh, an act, a bill pending in the state legislature, House Bill 4574, which is an act dissolving the Wakely Water District, which is needs state legislative approval since the state legislature set it up in the first place. Uh, it, water district is no longer a relevant entity since it has merged into the town water department. And we should, I would think, sign a letter of support that the Wakely Water District be dissolved. Any comments? Nope. I move we approve the letter of support. Second. Second. Any further discussion, Julie? No. No further discussion. Vote, Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Aye. Uh, 
uh, going back, we have to allocate the remaining ARPA, also known as CLFRF, which acronym you prefer, money, which the town got. This is COVID relief money that was approved in 2021, I believe. Uh, the county got approximately $440,000 originally. We have spent roughly $310,000 of it and have an unallocated balance of $132,841. This money must be spent, contracted for, or spent by December 31st of this year. Yeah, it's... Um... It needs to be obligated by the end of this year and spent by the end of next year. So okay. if you have a contract in place, that's considered obligation. Uh, most of these items we probably will get taken care of. Okay. But we should deal with this now, not at the last minute, because otherwise the contract might not be in place. Uh, I have been working with our town administrators to work out what what we should do. These are all capital items. There's got four capital items that I would propose we use this money for. Uh, these were all considered by the finance committee and would have been in the budget if they are not uh, paid for in this manner. And I will just run through them. Uh, we have $17,000 to purchase new accounting software, which is required by the change in the accounting structure we're going to have because Burkhab, uh dissolving their partnership agreements for accounting. Uh, this is just for the initial purchase of the software, not for the annual, any annual fees involved. We did roughly the same thing with the treasurer collector software. We purchased that and I think it was another accounting or bookkeeping software that we did the same thing. Uh, the assessor's department is requesting $5,000 for new software. As well, uh, software is antiquated and does not mesh with other design interface well with any other software. So we need to purchase that. Once again, just the initial installation, not any annual contracts or maintenance. Those will go into the budgets of the various other departments involved. Next, we've got $34,440, which we have as a estimate to clean the ducts at Whitley Elementary School, which apparently has not been done ever. Uh, it cannot be a healthy situation. It cannot be a good situation for transmitting heat through the building to have 35 years of dust and dirt and who knows what build up in the ductwork. We have a request from the South County Senior Center for a uh, hour portion of paying for a van. I know that the fee of grant that will pay for a fair amount of it, but and Deerfield and Sunderland will be contributing as well. Our portion that's been attributed by South County Senior Center is $6,250. We have We'll be doing a wage and class study through the personnel committee uh, to set wage levels and to formalize. If so, just to get the better idea, Tricia, then can you to establish steps and grades um, for and classifying positions for the town staff. And there were two different possible costs for this. Uh, I think one was eleven thousand or twelve thousand. 
12, 12,000 for the company that is doing it. That if they also did job descriptions, but we already have job descriptions, which the personnel committee can polish up and work on. So if we provide the job descriptions ourselves, then the wage class study will cost seven thousand dollars, which I would propose also to come out of this fund. And finally, the last item is for the purchase of mini split units for five rooms at Waitley and Elementary School. This is part of a two-phase project to be was it five or six this year and it, what's the total number? Eleven, I think. Eleven and six it, and then it, yeah. It's a okay, yeah. so it's six this would be six this year, yeah. five. five next. Yeah. Uh which the building could certainly use and they are supposed to be compatible with the building management system for the heating. So that yeah. those things that I've I just I think the audio yeah. must have gone out. I, I can't tell what you're what you just said, that last one. Uh, uh, that last can you one say again what that item is? Mini splits for Waitley Element six mini splits for Waitley Elementary School out of a total of eleven the other five are being proposed for next year, but we would pay for the first six out of okay. the, the COVID money. Right. Uh, and that's sixty that's sixty three thousand. That's sixty three thousand and that this and all, all of these are things which the finance committee approved. So they would have been funded this year out of the budget or out of free cash or out of some other Okay. Form. We've got this money here that that would both be used. If each of those six items is approved, mm -hmm. then we would have a balance left in the CLF RF account of $151, which if we don't spend it would go away at the end of the year. So just a minor clarification, yep. Mr. Chair. Yep. Um, we did indicate to the finance committee that you were considering paying for the school deck work out of the arbor. So, okay. And um, the same for the um, South County Senior Service Van. Wage and class, they really didn't contemplate at all in terms of a funding source. And the rest you said, so it was correct. Okay. Just one of so the, 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 the wage and class didn't come. With yeah, the wage and class was, yes, it's needed, but they didn't act okay. on it. Okay. I have a couple of questions sure. for clarification. Um, first of all, in the first sentence, the first paragraph, it says, following its recommendations would leave about $118,955 in free cash. Mm -hmm. Under the heading balance, it says the scenario would leave a balance in free cash of $181,955. Clarify if one of those is correct. The, the difference there is the, is the 63000 on yeah. many splits. The difference in the 181 and 118 yes. is the many splits. So using the finance committee's recommendations, it would have left 118,000. But using taking the 63,000 from the mini splits, what they were going to fund with free cash and fund it with ARFA, it leaves 181,000 in free cash. So uh, I was wondering why we're mixing free cash and ARPA in one document. I was like, I mean, the same thing. Because the finance committee has made their recommendations using free cash, but because they don't have the authority. Right. To they, they can't the assume that ARPA. something is going to be paid out of ARPA. Right. That might be authority to do but that. I see. So the second scenario is what's under balance. Right. Okay. Leaving more money in free cash banks. Uh, the second question I have is I recall being at a finance committee meeting a couple of weeks ago where there was a question about whether the mini splits for the school were the best way to go. Yes. Was so that resolved? Since you were at that meeting, both the superintendent, the school business administrator, and the facilities manager all came to a finance committee with lots of detailed maps and everything and explained that to everybody. and um, the rebates are 60% on the cost. Uh -huh. So yeah. one or two other school districts have done it already. Yeah. So they do have some precedence for uh -huh. it. Um, and so 
Um, and I always they, understood that, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. that a mini split wasn't. It does do both. Somebody yeah, was yeah, saying, yeah. why don't yes. we do a heat pump instead of mini splits? And I always understood that yeah. the mini split was there one in the same. They were, yeah. yeah, they do both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mini split is a kind of heat pump. It's a kind right. of heat. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so they voted to support that. They, okay. they voted to support that. And the rebate money, either directly or somehow, was find its way to free cash, ultimately. If we get the rebates right. on these, it would not have to go into this account to be spent before the 31st. It would. It or does the, come back the price now. quoted does, should not include the rebate, right? That's correct. It does. Right. right. We're not assuming the rebate yeah, okay. in these figures. Right. right. But oh, it is okay. incumbent on no. the town to make sure we're tracking that rebate that right. comes yeah. back to the town and right. that it's allocated back um, administratively to a town meeting and you know, we capture it. It's probably going to come into some rebates or involvement for the meeting or something. We have to figure that out. Or whether the other rebates are coming in. And just going in the miscellaneous revenue. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't yeah. encumbered by, it's not gonna be by an, CLFRF. It's right. not going to be an automatic process when that rebate comes. So right. No, because again, I, was, I just right. wanted to make sure that it yeah. did not fall under yeah. the, since the money to initially oh. pay for it oh, no. was out of here, that it's not encumbered no. when, when a rebate comes back. No, I we, don't we don't think, think so. it does. I, yeah. I'm just yeah. thinking yeah. about reading yeah. the, okay. the right. CLR, right. FRF information on whether there was anything in there about rebates or not. Okay. But, <laughs> I, I just want to make sure okay. that folks, I mean, oh no, you can't spend that money because <laughs> it was out of that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so just just to clarify, because I think I had it backwards, yeah. you're saying that the sixty three thousand uh, dollars is the whole cost does not yet include rebates. The rebates would come back later, and they would come back to the town, not to the school. And so 60% of that cost is going to come back and it'll end up in free cash. Eventually. Assuming we pursue them properly yeah. and so yeah. on. Okay. And this is phase one of a two phase mini split program. Phase two is for FY26. And okay. So we should save those rebates and use them. The rebate is 60% or the rebate is 40 I I don't know. I I, I think that the sixty. I think it's sixty. Yeah. yeah okay. Just double check. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so that would be about. Then we should save that money and so put it towards it phase two. Come back and just as a note, the schools also require an, an electrical upgrade to handle the mini splits. That is coming out of budget. That will be a out of free cash, so that will be a warrant item at town meeting. Uh, but that will, that will be done this year, not next. Any other questions or comments on this? Okay. Hearing none, uh, yep. I make a motion that we approve the uh, allocation obligation of the CLFRF money as just described, seventeen thousand dollars for accounting software, five thousand dollars for assessor software, thirty-four thousand four hundred forty dollars for school elementary school duct work, sixty two hundred and fifty dollars for the South County Senior Center of Van, seven thousand dollars for the wage and class study, and sixty three three thousand dollars for mini splits for the Waitley Elementary School. Do I have a second? Yes, I'll second that. And the other comments, last chance. No. no. <clears throat> we'll vote. Julie. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Aye. Done. <clears throat> Next, um, old business. Uh, yeah. Exit 35 market analysis update. That um, be... I just wanted to make yeah. sure that everybody got. I forwarded it to everybody. They exit 35. Yeah. I think Sylvie can 
Yeah, I was going to ask Sylvie yeah. to give us a brief rundown on that. Except so, oh, oh, there we go. Yes. Hi. Um, so uh, yes, um, the uh, the analysis um, uh, is available for you all to uh, look over, and we um, have a meeting coming up for with the Exit Thirty Five Study Group and Jeff um, from Berkshire Design and Kathy McCabe, who um, conducted the market analysis for us. Um, so that will be taking place on the 22nd of this month at 6 p.m. So you're all welcome to join that meeting virtually or in person, and I'll be posting um, the agenda in the Zoom link um, so that that's available to everyone. Um, so I don't know if there was um, anything else uh, that anyone had questions about the analysis right now or um, um, I, or if there's anything in particular you wanted to know about that, but, um, you know, uh, we will have plenty of time to discuss it, um, with Kathy, which will be great. I'm happy to wait until after your meeting and what, see what comes out of that. Okay. You know, what people think about the analysis of that point. Mm -hmm. Um, related to that, um, I, I wanted to just keep you apprised of, um, projects for which I'll be submitting grant applications um, in the coming weeks, um, uh, one of which is um, uh, additional funding to continue on to the next um, phase of the Exit 35 study. Um, so I'll be working um, with Jeff to uh, uh, to have a, a scope of work for that, what that next phase will look like, um, and I can share that with you all. Um, and um, that that will be part of that'll be a one stop application um, and a couple of other things as well. Um, uh, funding for the next phase of the comprehensive plan. Um, Megan from FERCOG um, provided a scope of work, which I'll be using um, for our application for for funding for the next round. Um, and then also um, uh, seeking funding for um, work on Egypt Road to continue. Um, so I'm talking with Wayne um, and Chris from Berkshire Design um, about that project. Um, and so those are all um, coming up um, in next month. So um, I'll be working on all of those sort of in, um, you know, in tandem or in together. Um, and then tomorrow um, I have a submission for um, a, a, a micro grant on behalf of the library for their library of things. So um, that'll also be a nice project to get underway. What what is the proposed work on Egypt Pro that the grant would cover? Um, so that is to close the the water loop. Um, so they've been uh, working closely with um, with the uh, folks from the railroad um, to to uh, design and engineer about um, going underneath the railroad track. So I think that they have permitting in place, and what we want to do is probably it'll be a uh, two more. It, another two phases. Um, so um, if I'm um, remembering correctly, Wayne had said that because we want to make use of those permits that have already been um, secured for the project, we could we could you know do, uh, plan to do the one part of the project uh, for which we need the permitting to to go under the tracks, um, and then there will be an additional. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure what will go into the, the the next part of that, but we'll have to finish up with another round of funding because um, the project in total right now would be about um, 900 and let's see. Um, I think what we're going to ask for is 500,000 for this next phase and then the following phase would be something similar. So um, because there's a limit on how much funding is available for any one particular project um, phase, uh, we're gonna sort of break it out that way. Okay. Any other comments, questions, Joyce? Anything for Sylvie? Just a round of applause. Round of applause. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. The liaison updates. Hope you're feeling better, Sylvie. Yes. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, I have no recent liaison updates. Really? Um, nothing specific. <laughs> met with the water department last week and they're continuing to wrestle with finances and figure out how yeah, basically what the next year or two is going to look like uh, so we have a building the system in place. Yeah. Joyce, anything happening senior center? Any meetings? 
Um, uh, just briefly, I, we actually got notification about the um, the vehicle grant and um, that uh, we just approved the money for that. Uh, um, this is going to be for one fully accessible type CB vehicle. I don't know exactly what that means, but fully accessible means wheelchair. Um, we don't uh, have we we have need for that and and haven't had a lot of access to that. Um, and you know we're getting this for a local match of twenty three thousand five thousand or six thousand of which is coming from Waitley, and this is just fantastic. And I just uh, another round of applause for our senior center director um, for chasing after that grant for us. Uh, I missed one item. We have to reschedule our June 11th meeting because that is election day. Uh, but we can try for June 10th, the day before. So, I, that might be a good option. And then if we don't have the warrant, if there's something fishy with the warrant, we can actually get a sign on the 10th be posted on the 11th for the wow. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Okay. So. Okay. So why don't yeah, we? That's good. Um, hopefully right. the warrant will be all set, ready to go on the twenty eighth. Yeah. But just in case it's not, we if you do it on the tenth, we have enough time to still go still the warrant. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Our June eleventh meeting is rescheduled for June tenth. Uh, and administrative yeah. updates. No, you just have the list of your pending items telling me what's going on. Oh, we should. Yeah. Yeah. And telling you what we're doing and trying to spread water on folks like that. Don't have that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, that's better. We're happy to answer any questions about that. And for the general public out there, if anybody is interested in being an animal inspector, please let us know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we've been, any items not anticipated? No. What is FM for flag policy and motion and HCA? FM in parentheses. Oh, future meeting. I future think. meeting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like FM. Yeah. 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 It doesn't match to anybody. You're just as yeah. 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 I know. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? No. I move what? that we adjourn. Oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't see that on my agenda. She tipped yeah. ahead because it was under use of opera funds. That oh, oh Lord, and, and we have mm -hmm. they were to ask us. Okay. Oh, operating the council. There we go. And so the things are going like a move very quickly. Why don't you fill us in on what's going on here? Okay, so the capital planning committee, I mean, the Finance Committee met um, last Tuesday night and voted the operating and capital budget. The um, operating budget was voted pretty much as presented by the department heads with a impact on the tax rate of a dollar or two. The board, select board just voted to take uh, two items out of the operating budget, the um, software for assessors and accounting. So as a result of those votes, the finance committee needs to meet again. Um, I would recommend to the board, since that needs to also be a joint meeting, since you're changing their recommendations and we'd like to have a uniform budget at town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, that we do that next Tuesday, because as Lynn pointed out, we need to get a warrant put right. together and a booklet written. Um, so she will redo the budget figures on the operating budget, which 
um, I'm sure they'll be happy to hear because that um, affects the free cash number uh, in terms of what was allocated. There were two, um, I guess for lack of a better word, funding miscommunications between Lynn and I. The scuba apparatus was recommended from um, the, by the um, finance committee to be paid out of free cash. Um, when Lynn plugged in the numbers uh, to review, she thought that that money was coming out of capital stabilization and minus 183,000 under the figures. Um, during the meeting, uh, we were working under the assumption that the 225,000 used to reduce the tax rate annually had already been taken off the top of our certified free cash of 591,955. Um, we confirmed that again at the meeting. And uh, today when Lynn and I were talking, she had sort of a miscommunication in her head that she had never taken it off. So um, therefore we need to do some reconnoiting with finance committee, um, but Fred, and Lynn talked last week as well before Lynn and I discussed this today. And um, he has some suggestions for the board in terms of how we address some of those items in addition to um, allocate potential allocations into the stabilization fund. So is that a good summary? Yeah. Fred? Uh, really, as far as things coming out, the one big item is the fire department air tax. That's $183,000, which if that 225000 had been there, we would have been able to cover, but it doesn't right. look like we can. Um, so I, as much as I would love to provide them for the fire department because they are, their existing equipment is old, it just doesn't strike me as so urgent that we need to really take either our free cash or capital stabilization accounts down to unacceptably low levels to pay for them in this year's budget. Uh, so, you know, while it's not for us to recommend anything to the finance committee, I I would not be in favor of a budget that included that money coming out of either free cash or capital stabilization in this year's budget. Uh, beyond that, well, the other item, what else would we be talking about with that? Because that, that's the big item that if we can, if we pull out. Yeah, that was it. So, so for the board, oh, 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 the additions to the stabilization, right? Plan. So, for the so the spreadsheet that you have in front of you, under which it says project request, the finance committee has recommended funding of all these items with the understanding that um, the stretcher and the um, the van will come out of off of funding. Well, but and, and, and the and the mini splits. Yes, but they recommended add free cash, not okay. knowing the mini splits would. Okay, but the, just, yeah, the, the, pro the project request right. just. Right. So the, right. And the only other difference that you see is other than free cash was that the pickup truck for 66000 for highway, 30000 would come for vehicle stabilization, and 35000 would come from free cash. So does that then leave us the money to do the air packs? No, no, because the 225 was thought to have already been taken oh, out of the top okay. out of the top of oh, the 591. So, so right. Okay. Okay. So on balance, not funding the 183, mm -hmm. which was intended to just go into stabilization because the fire department was applied for a grant. So that was like as a safety net in case they didn't get the grant, it mm -hmm. would be in capital stabilization to be moved out at a future town meeting to fund it. Mm -hmm. So if that is not 
put in capital stabilization and with the additional funds you just took from ARPA, such as the um, um, the mini splits, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. your delta is almost oh. the same to catch up from that 225 oversight. Okay. Now, because with the air tax in the budget and the other things which the finance committee wasn't sure that we would fund a ARPA fund. They have not proposed any money going getting transferred to stabilization accounts for this year, which we have done for many years is to make sure to fund those. Uh, we've got three stabilization accounts that we would conceivably fund the vehicle stabilization which has worked very well in the past five, seven years in evening out the cash distribution, mostly for police, scheduled police vehicle replacement. So we didn't have big hits every three years for a new mm -hmm. piece of uh, a new vehicle. Uh, as was this year, money comes out of vehicle stabilization and we don't get the big hit on the budget. Uh, capital stabilization, it's always a good idea to keep that well funded in case something comes along that we do need to fund to a large extent that we can't necessarily wait until the annual town meeting could do. Building stabilization was established two or three years ago to cover the uh, sort of inaugural costs for getting pl starting planning on a new highway department, which is in the process now. We've got a study that's out and we've got to work with the uh, consultants on. Currently, there's about $91,000 still in that account. I don't know that it's necessary to fund that any further at this time. Uh, it's not, that's never gonna be a big enough fund to pay for building the building. We're just talking about money for stunting, for studies, for you know, very preliminary groundwork or surveys, things of that sort. And I think at this point, $91,000 is sufficient. If more money is needed for that at some point, then we've got a bigger study, then we can go to a either annual or special town meeting and get money transferred from one of the other stabilization accounts to try to cover that, but I would think that transferring 20,000 each to vehicle and capital stabilization is called for. I don't see a necessity for, building, for transferring money to building stabilization at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any comments on that? Nope. Doesn't, doesn't look that way. No. So what action yeah. do we need to take at this point? If the select board is in favor of these recommendations, then um, we would communicate that to the finance committee and ask them to meet so that you can share them with them. Yeah, I don't think it calls for a resolution, but just a sense of the board. Yes, I don't think it requires a vote because, again, it is the finance committee's budget. And these recommendations in the spreadsheet are minus the things that we just decided to vote to, to fund through right. IPA. Okay, right. so you have everything that's between ARPA and capital. Yep. Right. And free cash and stabilization and ARPA. Yeah, so it's all the kitchen sink is here, and then um, we'll rework it so it's in each column. Yeah, and I, I, I think that the key differences as far as transmitting to finance committee are recommending to them that we put $20,000 each to vehicle and oh. stabilization, and that we are not, and we would be in favor of holding off on the air pack yeah. Yeah. purchase. The, the other things are all just how they're gonna be paid for. One is a deletion from what they've got on their list, 
and two others are additions. And just quick figures, yeah. if we took everything from free cash that you we're talking about, um, including the revenue to reduce the tax rate, um, you'd still have 122,000 in free cash. Okay, and that's with the 40,000 in yeah. transfers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a little lower than we've been in the past, but in the same. 60,000. Yeah, we, we've been between 150 and 175,000 in the past. Yeah. Um, so we're a little lower this year. Generally, We've been, our meeting, our town meeting has usually been earlier in the year, yeah. so you wanted to have a little bit of uh, extra leeway just in case something happened, you had to have a quick special town meeting. And, and, um, and, we've, and we've also got two vehicles in this year's right coming out of partially free cab, partially vehicle stabilization, as opposed to usually we'd only have one. Um, Fred, you might also want to mention that you spoke with the fire chief today yep. about this very issue. Yeah, um, I spoke, I did speak to the fire chief about the air packs. He very much wants them, but did not, I did not get the impression from him that this was strictly urgent, that it is something that we're going to have to do and the price may go up over the next year or two. But it just does not appear that this is the year that we were in a position to do it. Uh, yeah. If it, it, it gets the grant, it makes the conversation moot. If he doesn't, then we've got to figure out next year probably how to go about paying for it. But if the police, if the fire department can get by another year, and there was no indication that they couldn't, then I think we have to take propose that we take that out of this year's budget. Again, it's for the finance, you know, for us to be on the same page with the finance committee, and ultimately, we, you know, we will recommend or not recommend a budget at our next meeting, but we want to let the finance committee know where we stand. Any other comments on any of this capital spending? No. Okay. Um, and every, everyone, we're in agreement on the respective the, the recommending to cut the air packs and to add 40,000, 20,000 each to the stabilization funds. 60,000. No, no, no. no. 40, two. Should say we have a general stabilization, a capital stabilization, and a building. I didn't even. I was I thought the general stabilization would be paid by it, it I is. wasn't even proposing anything. Oh, okay. That. It was just, and you got 20,000. Right? Okay. So the vehicle and capital. So and then it's a balance of 142 then yeah, that right. we have in the um, Okay, we will convey that to the finance committee and hopefully come across with them under the four next Tuesday. Okay. Now, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn this meeting. I'll second okay. that. Vote, Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. Aye, you're adjourned.